The Ramcharit Manas is an excellent scripture that has answers to all material and spiritual doubts of the modern man. We find some people in the material world become disgusted with the nature of their own material life, unsure as to whether they should completely leave their materialistic occupations, they lead a life of dissatisfaction hanging at the crossroads of material and spiritual goals. Tulsidas Goswami has some recommendations for such inquiring souls. Tulsidas Ji discusses the case of a vitrified and non-vitrified clay pot to drive home his recommendations. As to whether one should continue with full-time spiritual endeavors or live with material aspirations along with certain spiritual endeavors. Vitrified pots are hardened due to exposure to high temperatures while non-vitrified pots are soft without the capacity to hold water. When the potter formulates a pot out of wet clay, he gives it a nice shape. Yet he is not very happy with just the shape of the pot. This is just the first step in the process of pot creation. Next, he vitrifies the pot by exposing it to high temperatures and then glazing it. Without this second step, a pot is no pot according to the potter. Without this second step, the pot is not saleable. When one tries to fill water in a non-vitrified pot, it is going to dissolve the clay as the pot starts losing its shape. The pot of clay will soon end up becoming a messy lump. Goswami Tulsidas has equated the clay pot to a human being. When a person takes up spiritual practice and performs it well under superior guidance in line with the scriptures, following the yamas and niyamas or the ten fundamental precepts preceding spiritual discipline, the heart of the practitioner is bound to become soft. Such a state is similar to the clay pot assuming its beautiful initial shape. Similar to the non-vitrified clay pot, the spiritual practitioner although has developed softness of the heart and become kind in his dealings, he has not yet attained maturity. He is still in his formative stage. There is yet a great significance in the case of the non-vitrified clay pot and the stage of a sincerely endeavoring sadhaka. The initial shape of the clay pot is extremely important. It is this very shape of the clay pot that allows it to hold a great deal of water post vitrification. The shape contributes to the volume of the pot. However, the shape is only useful post the heating and glazing process of the pot. Similarly, performance of sadhana and abiding by scriptures is essential for shaping out the sadhaka so that he can hold the love of God in his heart. Without this initial process of cleansing and observation of the precepts of dharma, the individual shall have no capacity for higher attainments. All said, this is the initial stage of sadhana. Such a sadhaka owing to his softness is yet not ready to become a solid carrier of spiritual potency. He can nevertheless be pulped by the hammer of maya. He is yet to become immune to the blows of material nature. Such an individual has to be exposed to the fire heat of vairagya and inner renunciation. This is similar to the heating of the freshly prepared clay pot. Unless a sadhaka is trained with the philosophy of inner abandon, he is still exposed to the perils of maya. In the modern day, we find many devotees who are performing excellent service towards the Lord. However, we do not find much inner resolve in them. They melt very easily and compromise with tough situations. On account of such compromise, they may be affected by the demands of materialistic living and there is a certain drop in their value systems. Such a drop in the value system soon poses as valid concessions in the Bhakti regime. Such actions shall in due course prove counterproductive and choke the creeper of Bhakti. In bhakti, such softness is unacceptable if at all one wishes to draw the complete grace of Bhagavan. Service towards the Lord is central in the life of a bhakta. One cannot perform proper devotional service without the sense of implicit vairagya and complete surrender. The ego has to be completely offered to Bhagavan so that he can properly spiritualize it. This happens only after the realization of abandon or vairagya. 
unless we are glazed and vitrified in the fire of surrender and vairagya with a perfect understanding that the lord is all important we shall continue to remain as non vitrified clay pots which will keep losing its shape with every blow of maya devi one has to develop complete abandon internally as well as externally to the extent that no praise fame recognition or wealth fear of failure etc affects the bhakta unless we are ready to lose our all for the lord we cannot be useful carriers of the spiritual current the very basis of a non vitrified non glazed self is the me and mine bodily concept in ordinary life we take the first opportunity to give ourselves the credit we associate others with us and talk in favor of people who favor us all this must go unless we are externally and brutally non biased in our approach to life we can never become ready pots becoming a ready pot is when we only see things totally in relation with the lord unless the lord occupies our consciousness at all times we shall fall prey to the my conception of me and mine unless everything else is seen in relation to only the lord vairagya or true abandon shall never germinate for this we have to be steadfast in our practices and consciously bring the lord into our direct consideration through sadhana this shall bring in true vairagya or abandon first we should offer materials to bhagwan and then consume them this is the initial stage the next stage is when the lord consumes us if we realize that we breathe and live only within our lord that is when our vairagya would achieve fruition each breath of ours should be the breath of the lord each thought of ours should be the lord's thought unless our spiritual maturity reaches such a pinnacle it is better that we continue to be in the practice stage of spirituality and not enter into taking up as a spiritual preacher otherwise our ego shall speak and masquerade as the lord's words we shall then become hypocrites we shall then stealthily superimpose our desires on the lord such actions will only deceive us into falsely believing that we are devotees our humility is in totally accepting our lowly position the more we internally bow down the more the lord shall occupy us the more the lord occupies us vairagya shall grow in our hearts the more vairagya happens the more we shall become glazed and vitrified pots that carry the pristine waters of the lord's divine currents